Welcome to the Tiproxy Method, creating confident learners. The Tiproxy Method uses a unique combination of breath work, brain body work, gratitude, and a clay-based program to affect the neuroplasticity of the brain in students. To help strengthen their mind-body connection, help them develop a growth mindset, and most importantly, trust and confidence in themselves. First of all, welcome, welcome, and aloha. I'm so excited you found this podcast, and I'm so excited to be putting this first episode out there. This podcast has been a long time in the making, 20 years of experience, professional experience at this point, and I'm so excited to share my knowledge and insight and experience with a larger audience and in a new way to get more of this out-of-the-box thinking, this mind-body connection um, and resources to the larger public. Before we get started, I wanted to share that I have a free assessment video that I'd love to share with you, where I walk you through a simple process in reading to figure out what type of learner your child is. I use this with every student when I first meet them to give me a sense of whether they are more of a visual or phonetic learner. To receive this free gift, sign up for my newsletter at pages.tawnytutors.com forward slash newsletter. As soon as you sign up, you'll receive it in your inbox. So let's get started. I hope that you enjoy and you take something new away from this discussion. I am a firm believer that me as a person, my world, my life experience has made me the educator that I am. A little bit about me just outside of um, the classroom. I'm a world traveler. I'm a yogi. I've been practicing for over 16 years and also have taught yoga. I was a competitive athlete growing up and I've taught worldwide in California, the Bahamas, Switzerland, Singapore, and ha- now have ended up here on Maui for over a decade. I absolutely love learning new things about health, the mind-body connection, and being active and having new experiences. Um, me as an educator, I have taught for over 20 years, over 5,000 students, and I've specialized working with students one-on-one who struggle in general, but I've taught kindergarten and homeschooled all the way through high school and really taught the gamut, which makes me a little bit more of a unique educator in my experience in and out of the classroom. I typically deal with students who struggle in school with everything from learning differences, dyslexia, anxiety, low self-confidence, and distraction in the classroom. As a teacher, I believe in teaching the whole child um, that no two children are alike um, and that you need to tailor your in- tailor instruction to the individual. With that being said, I still use this a very unique combination um, this proxy method, this method that teaches the whole child, but also uses the brain body connection and influencing the internal state so that when kids are more embodied, they're able to focus and retain knowledge a lot more and that we can actually change the synaptic connections in the brain. Um, When we're able to have students who are at ease and calm and confident, that actually allows for their true academic potential to be met and for them to develop a growth mindset to persevere through anything that may be challenging. We can't create confidence in academics just in the realm of academics, but when we get into the mind-body connection, um, we can start to have them become more confident in themselves, which then allows for like little academic successes. And then these academic successes tend to snowball into their confidence. And then the confidence starts to seep out into other realms. And I've just said for years and years and years that really academics is the ability to create confidence. Once you create confidence in oneself, when a student is trusting and full full of confidence, then they create the ability to learn and achieve. Otherwise, everything else is just not available to them. They're blocking themselves from being able to really retain or learn something new if they believe that they can't. So essentially, I've been teaching for 20 years, but more of these out-of-box things pulling from the breath work, the brain body work, the neuroplasticity that I'm obsessed with. I really started with two of my students almost uh, 10 years ago. They were a couple of boys who had been out of school for a moment and they were testing at the lowest percentile of the grade level below them. So less than 10% of a year in front of them or below them. So 
across the board, academics were a struggle and I needed to try everything and anything of my best teaching practices to get to them. And it was the out of box things, the gratitude, um, the body movement, the getting back into the body, even some of the yoga that really ended up helping them. And then a clay based program that allowed them to orient the symbols of language so that they could start to read and write and do math fluently. So because of having students that I had never seen so far behind, I had to really start reaching and perfecting my method. What's ironic about this is that once I started using what I had used with them with every other student who wasn't even struggling in the same realm or even students who didn't struggle, it, it gave them another tool in their toolbox. So the best teaching practices that I was using with um, these two boys ended up being the foundation for every other student that I would come across from there on. And, and at this point, I'd already been teaching for over a decade. And just to see kids still struggling in a one-on-one -on -one setting and not having any foundation, not any embodiment and so forth. So that's where I started to really become interested in the neuroplasticity of the brain, that the synaptic connections are rapidly growing and developing in our lifetime, but especially for those first 24 years. And we can do things like breath work and gratitude and movement and a mind body um, connection and exercises that actually help the brain fire and wire a little bit better, as Joe Dispenza says. So, I became really interested in breath work to increase the connective tissue between the two hemispheres, the corpus calypsa, and also just how you can see if the brain was really functioning at a high level and whether they were signaling, communicating smoothly. Like when you think of an AP student, a really high functioning academic student, they're actually firing on both hemispheres, the right creative and the left analytical. And that connection between the brain is super, super smooth. So I became kind of interested in how we can test what's going on with students and how they're processing, but also how you can affect the brain through learning, through positivity, through gratitude, through breath work, through brain body connection, through balance, that all these things are interconnected. They're not like one and they're not individual pieces so and just on a more like practical level if you look at the have you ever noticed the body language of a student who is at ease with their learning they're they can get really comfortable they can even like relax to the point of you know on a couch and reading and learning versus now picture the body language of a student who's really struggling they're usually slenched over um, you know, body language can tell us a lot, but we can also affect the body too. Straight spine allows the brain to kind of think a little bit better. The academics, whether it's homeschool curriculum or school curriculum or math or reading or whatever, is just the container, right? But we're really looking, I'm more interested in how they're processing, how they're critically thinking, how they're feeling about themselves, how they how their confidence is and how they are going to deal with the challenge or process at hand. So over the last 20 years, especially the last few years, I've been more interested in how we can affect the brain-body connection through breath work, gratitude, changing their thought processes, and also helping their balance. Like if you notice, you can actually see a lot what's going on with a child, how they're processing based on their balance. You can have them stand on one foot, maybe even close their eyes, Remember, it's a cross-body thing, so if they're misbalanced on the left foot, something's going on with the right hemisphere of the brain, and if they're not able to balance on the right foot, something's going on with that left side, that analytical stuff. It's so interesting, but we can use breath work, gratitude, cross-body brain work to help that connection be a little bit smooth so that the hemispheres of processing can be um, smoother, that the, that the hemispheres of the brain are communicating. And then by giving them that, we can then look at the academic material from a solid foundation and base. When we teach the whole child, when we teach the mind-body connection, um, influence the mind, the body with the mind and the mind with the body. So what I've found recently is that when we affect the brain-body connection through breath work, gratitude, changing their thought processes, the balance work, the academic material 
can come from a solid foundation base. And those details and those subject matters and so forth just kind of sort themselves out. I am a firm believer in non-fluff that we, we get the core subjects, the reading, the number sense, the writing, the spelling in line, anything else can be you know taken care of because those are the foundation. When we affect the cross hemisphere connection of the brain, we're helping them tap into problem solving responses that they can naturally go to. So this quote is the quote that I go to with every student that I meet. Um, it's the very first thing. It's part of the first conversation, which essentially sums up the way that I believe academics are. Men often become what they believe themselves to be. If I believe I cannot do something, it makes me incapable of doing it. But when I believe I can, then I acquire the ability to do it, even if I didn't have in the beginning. This pretty much sums up what I believe in about education. We have, the, this is from Mahatma Gandhi. And the part about this quote that is unique is, when I believe I can, then I acquire the ability to do it, even if I didn't have the beginning. That's the whole basis of academics. If I don't know how yet, if I believe that I'll figure it out, that I'll learn, that I will process this, that I can achieve it, I will. There's, you know, the Henry Ford, if you think you can, you can, if you think you can't, you can't, but this goes a little further. You might not have that ability to begin with, but if you believe that you will, you will figure it out, right? It's anything in life. We're, we're still learning as adults and so forth. One thing that I think I do differently in the education world is that I believe in consistency and high expectations that creating positive self talk and a confident critical thinker will allow any of the subject matter to unfold as needed that the tools are there that the perseverance is there what i tend to do is i have students come back to the question for themselves how do you learn how do you make sense of this for you right no one can go in and do the brain work for them and there are some things that come naturally for some students and easily and some things that don't, but we have to learn how to figure out for ourselves how it is. So consistency is kind of what creates that habit, those lasting changes, the embodiment being present in the body. And we always have to have a high expectation, but go at a pace that is sustainable that a student can go. One of my biggest differences as an educator is I believe in discussion and the relationship that's fostered through discussion and is created over time. So I believe in teaching life skills first to affect the brain, the nervous system, the presence of the students, the focus, and then we can do the real work of academics with the right skill set and right tools and right foundation. So I tend to start every session with gratitude and breath work, and I consider this foundational work this is where we build their academic foundation on a rock rather than sand. And when they have this in their body, when they can come present, when they can feel at ease, when they are, their brain is functioning at the highest rate possible for them, then we can look at the details of the academics. So I'll leave you with this one question as we round up this first episode. What three grateful things can you list for today? And a lot of times we're taught for the big things. And I'll go in more into this next time. We're taught about the big things, but what are the little things that you can find today? And then when you think of those three things, I want you to sit in your body and see how that makes you feel as well. Thanks so much for listening. Before I go, I wanted to share that I have a free assessment video that I'd love to share with you, where I walk you through a simple process in reading to figure out what type of learner your child is. I use this with every student when I first meet them to give me a sense of whether they are more of a visual or phonetic learner, as it helps better prepare me on what tools are best to use moving forward. To receive this free gift, sign up for my newsletter at pages.tawnytutors.com forward slash newsletter. As soon as you sign up, you'll receive it in your inbox. If you're interested, follow me on Instagram and Facebook at The Taproxy Method. I also take on a very few select private one-on-one -on -one clients worldwide for homeschool support and tutoring work. Email me at tawny.taproxy at tawnytutors.com. Have a blessed day and aloha.